on today's episode of Uncut Gems with Slim. You literally have to actively choose happiness every day, every scenario, every situation. You have to choose it. And it's not always easy, but it's something you must choose if you want to be happy. Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of Uncut Gems with Slim. I'm your host, Slim Roche, and we are back with another episode for season one, Real Life Goals. And today's episode is titled, How to Be Happy. So before we get into it, I just want to update you guys with my life, check in with y'all, see how y'all life going, like what's going on. Um... This week in the past like two weeks, I've been I've had high highs and I've had low lows a little bit. Um, we with my job, we went won a um game when we beat Florida, and that was a really high high for me. It was exciting, um, and things like that. And then, like, soon as I the game was over and I was like heading home from work. I got the unfortunate news that someone in my family passed away. And um, that information is never something easy on the ear. And um, everyone deals with their grieving differently. Me, I kind of like seclude and kind of like stay to myself and try to navigate throughout that time. This has been the first like... um, death in my family that is close to me. Um, I've been experiencing throughout COVID, um, like friends whose family members have passed, or I've had friends that have passed and things like that. But this was the first one that kind of like hit close to home for me. And so that's what I've been dealing with. Um, but I've also, like I said, have had good highs. I've been reconnecting with some of my friends who like really and truly are there for me and support me. I've had different people um, just in my life checking in on me and things like that. And those kind of things kind of help give you a positive outlook on your situation, what you're going through and different things like that. So shout out to all my friends who've been checking on me, family members. And I tell y'all, family is so important. Like I got to, during that time, I got to spend an amount of time with my older or elder family members. And I remember like back in the day, like you didn't know them people and you would be like, oh my gosh, who is this loud person who's just like, oh, we family, we family. And you don't know her or him from a can of paint. But it's like, as you get older, I've I start treasuring um, those times, just listening to my elders talk about like their past experiences and things like that. And then also that's like your history. Um, And it's a lot of information that is important to be passed down because, you know, your family history isn't necessarily in the history books. So as you get older, you want to like make sure you lend an open ear to those older family members to kind of um, hear more about their upbringing, family members that you may not have known and things like that, because it just like helps educate you and you can continue to pass that along for generations to come um so anyway just love on your family your friends and just people around you in your circle because tomorrow the next breath is not promised and with that being said y'all this week is thanksgiving it's crazy thanksgiving is already here like the year is going by next thing we gonna blink it's gonna be christmas then we gonna blink again it's gonna be 20 22. So take time this week. Hopefully you guys um, get off on Thanksgiving or like just at least get to be surrounded by family members, friends, or just different people who truly care about you. So you can um, express that attitude of gratitude um, this week. And without further ado, we're going to jump into this week's episode. And like I said, it's called How to Be Happy. And there's no guideline on happiness, um, but this 
idea for this week, which really tied into real life goals, because I feel like a lot of people have a life goal of just to be happy, to have joy um, and things like that as like a baseline um, check mark on your life goal list. Um, and a few weeks ago, probably almost a month ago at this point, um, I was having a conversation with a friend and he was just sharing with me about how he felt like he had everything that he could ever want, but somehow he still felt like he wasn't happy. And, um, I feel like you always hear those scenarios where it's like, oh, money doesn't buy you happiness uh, or can your dream job bring you happiness? Can a relationship bring you happiness? And it truly got me thinking about how things and people don't bring you happiness and that happiness is a choice. In life, you can have the spouse, the house, the job and wealth and still not be happy. Real quick, I just wanted to take a moment and pause and ask, are you subscribed? Make sure you subscribe to us on all podcast streaming platforms and check out the visual on YouTube at Uncut Gems with Slim. Lastly, don't forget we are also on Instagram. Follow us on Insta to get motivational snippets, episode highlights, and so much more. Now, let's get back to today's episode. You have to choose happiness. And it's a choice that you make every day. Like you literally have to actively choose happiness every day, every scenario, every situation. You have to choose it. And it's not always easy, but it's something you must choose if you want to be happy. And so as I was researching the topic of happiness and like the guide to happiness, like how to be happy. Um, I stumbled across a blog that was written by Joshua Becker and it detailed 12 intentional actions to choose happiness. And so there were a few points um, from his list and I'll make sure to link the blog in the description box and in the show notes so you guys can check it out because it really blessed me and had a few points on there that I took and I'm going to share a few um, that tremendously stood out to me. So one, he mentioned carrying a smile and he said carrying a smile because studies indicate making an emotion filled face carries influence over your feelings. And I thought about it and I was like, you know what? That is so true because you ever like be doing something and somebody kind of like get on your nerves and you have like a stank face. Like I used to say all the time, like, you know, if I get an attitude, just give me a minute to unscrunch my face. And it's like after I can adjust my face and like get the attitude off my face, like then I'm good. And it's crazy how like a simple facial expression can just alter your emotions, alter how you feel, alter just how you move in that moment. And as someone who has like a really mean resting face, like it can be hard to carry a smile. Like my natural face is just like this. It's not like, like I never walk around like, when I talk, I'm not like, like, you see the difference from here to here. And it's just that energy. It literally shifts in that moment when you change your face. And so, um, like I said, it can be hard to carry a smile as someone who has a, you know, RBF. Um, but it also helps uplift me just by changing my posture, changing the posture of my facial features. Um, and I think that's something that I need to start practicing. But it's also something that you guys can Test out yourself and see if you like try and do like a subtle smile throughout your day. Is your day better? If you smile at someone, I'm pretty sure you'll make their day a little bit better. And just try and see um, if carrying a smile helps you like change that posture of just like moi mal, you know, just a very mm, attitudinal day. It's not even a word, but you know what I'm saying? Just try it out, test it out. I feel like when I smile, like it lights up a room. Um, I feel 
good energy, good vibes just by smiling. So that's definitely something that stood out to me. He also mentioned a way to take action toward choosing happiness is by speaking affirmations. And I feel like affirmation speaking affirmations over your life has been has become a big thing um nowadays just instilling it in your children um instilling it in yourself to build confidence like saying i am beautiful i am wanted i am necessary different affirmations like that are just so encouraging to other people and to yourself. So making sure that you're saying those daily affirmations, speaking them over your life and holding back complaints. That was a comma. It wasn't a period there. So speaking affirmations over your life, comma, and holding back complaints. So you can't forget that that and that little clause at the end Holding back complaints is such a big part. And as someone who is also self-aware, I'm very aware of who I am, how I move, how I act, all those things. And I know that I have a tendency to complain. Like I literally, I complain without intent. Like I'm not meaning to complain, but as I'm explaining my feelings, like sometimes it can Sometimes it comes off as complaining or sometimes it is complaining. Um, and so like I'll complain about things and sometimes it's just better to keep those things to yourself. If you keep those complaints to yourself, it'll help neutralize the situation that you're in, which would be an otherwise hostile environment. Like when you're complaining, like that environment is not an invitation for happiness. So if you hold back those complaints, speak more affirmations. Now you're welcoming happiness. You're welcoming joy. You're welcoming positivity into that moment. Another thing he mentioned is how important it is to treat others well. And I know that's like the, the golden rule, treat others how you want to be treated and all those kind of things. But like I've literally had firsthand experience and I know that it takes way more energy to dislike someone, to be rude and distasteful to someone. Like it takes so much more energy to do that Versus just treating people with kindness. And that includes those people who we don't feel are deserving of our kindness. Like I've literally experienced like a toxic environment where I just felt like, you know, um, people all up in my business, people talking behind my back, doing all these distasteful things. And me I'm going to give you a cold shoulder and you're going to feel it like it's the North Pole, okay? But the amount of energy it takes to put that cold shoulder up just drains you even more versus just being kind, brushing it off and just, you know, moving on and not even letting it phase you. So I encourage you all to treat other people well. Um, even if you feel like they don't deserve it. And then lastly, one that literally has changed my lifestyle um, is waking up on my terms. Now, technically, the Lord wake you up. He breathes breath into your lungs. OK, we don't you know, wake ourselves up. But when I say waking up on my terms, it's basically um, kind of setting that routine as soon as you wake up. That routine that gets you going, that um, allowing yourself the time to wake up on your terms. So you could do this by basically just adjusting your sleep schedule to allow for just a little bit more time. So I know you're thinking like, OK, well, how do I wake up on my own terms when I'm waking up in time to get to class and in time to get to work? And even though like you have a time that you need to get up by so you can get to where you need to go, you can still wake up on your terms. And so like if you have a certain time that you need to get somewhere, allow yourself additional time before that so you can get up a little bit earlier so you can establish a meaningful morning routine. By doing that, you're able to start the day on your terms. And one thing I like to do when I wake up, I say I like to wake my mind up first. And so it used to be um, just waking up, scrolling on my phone, da 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 but that's not that productive. And what I do now still isn't really productive, but it's 
how I like to wake up on my terms. So if I don't wake up and scroll a little bit on my phone, I'm going to turn on like a TV show. And one thing for me, TV shows in the morning, like it, it is something that's engaging. It kind of wakes you up, but it also is a good time measure for me. So if I wake up two hours before I need to leave out the door, that means two episodes. I used when I was growing up, I used to watch like Law and Order, that kind of thing. And you can kind of tell the point of the show like if it's the climax it's about 30 minutes in if they about to solve it you know you got about 15 minutes before the episode in that kind of thing so I watch different tv shows where like I can kind of time it and that keeps me on point so whatever part of the show I'm in I'm like okay I need to wrap it up like I don't got that much time left that kind of thing and so I like watching TV shows. I like fixing me something to eat because for me, my favorite meal of the day is breakfast. And I love, like, I'm always going to eat breakfast and that's on per. And I like... I like to make like grits in the morning. If I don't have time and I'm running late, I'll do me a little pop tart, a little toast. Like, I'm going to get something. I'm going to get very much something for breakfast, okay? And so that's another thing that I like to do in order to wake up on my terms before I head out for work. So like in my head, like I said, it allows me to kind of wake up my mind before I dive into the work day. So those are a few things that stood out to me from that blog. Again, I will list it in the description box and show notes below so you guys can check it out for yourself. But I hope those tips helped you learn different ways that you can choose happiness because happiness is a choice you have to choose it it's not an easy one but you got to choose it every day and that's how to be happy so i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode enjoy some turkey whatever you eat for thanksgiving because i know we got vegans pescatarian all all the different things I hope you eat something good for Thanksgiving, all right? I love y'all so much. Make sure you love all your family, friends, in your circle. Um, enjoy this week, and I will see y'all next week for episode nine. We're coming to a close. You know, it's 10 episodes this season. If you want a special guest, you know, let me know, because I'm thinking about maybe having a special guest for episode 10, but, you know, it's, it's up to y'all. Let me know in the comments who y'all want on the podcast to wrap up this first season. Make sure you subscribe, like this video so you don't miss any uploads and so that you're tuned in and ready for episode nine. And until next week. Wait.